lesson 16. This is a long series. There's 22 lessons, actually. And they're based upon one lesson for each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And uh, tonight we are studying from verses 121 down to verses 128. It says, I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. For they have made void thy law. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts according all things to be right, concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. Uh, tonight's lesson, as you know, each letter represents eight verses uh, of Psalm 119. Tonight, we are... Uh, studying the letter Ain, A-I-N. Uh, when it comes to our English uh, alphabet, there's really no letter in our language that exactly corresponds with this Hebrew letter. It would best be represented probably, probably by what were called breathings. <laughs> breathings in, in the Greek so no actual letter that would correspond with our English alphabet, but uh, by what was known as breathings. So this is a new division. It commences a new letter, uh, Ain. Um, if you look at verse 121, he says, I have done judgment and justice. Lead me not to mine oppressors. I have given the best decision possible on every case that came before me, he's saying, and I have endeavored to render to all their dues. The meaning of the first part of the verse is, I have led a righteous and upright life. The psalmist is portraying like this is, I'm trying my best. That's what we're all trying to do. Are we all trying to do our best? It's equivalent to saying that he had kept the law of God or had made that the rule of his conduct on a daily basis. We're just trying to live for God to the best of our ability. Uh, as you have noticed throughout the whole series, if you have been here, it is focused around the Word of God. If you and I are going to live for God to the best of our ability, then we have to keep this Word as part of our guideline, part of our road map. Uh, it's what allows us to say, I'm trying to the best of my ability in every aspect of my life to live for God. That's, that's what you and I are trying to do. And the psalmist says, I have done judgment and justice. He says, lead me not to mine oppressors, to the people who would do me wrong or would seek to hurt me. He, he urged us on the ground that he had been obedient to the law of God and, and that he's requesting a divine protection from God. God, I'm trying my best to live for you. Would you protect me from those who would try to disrupt me, distract me, detour me? People who, um, that would try on, on their claim to get me on an improper road. The man has no merit on his own and no claim to God, but as a child of God, you and I can request, God, I'm just trying to live right. I'm just trying to do my best. Would you put your hand upon my life that whatever comes my way, that anything that would be contrary to how you would want me to live for you, would you warn me in advance and would you guide me and protect me from those types of things? See, that's, that's serving a loving God that cares for you and I in such a way 
as you would for your child. You wouldn't let your child go with people who is going to harm them and, and do them wrong and, and, and cause them grief. You wouldn't let your children uh, be, have access to people who would not protect them or, or, or would not uh, have their best interests at heart. Uh, no, you, you, actually, you actually do the opposite. You leave people in the hands of people that you know are going to be responsible to look after them, to take care of them. And uh, it's no different with God and his children. The request is uh, you can ask God to put his hand upon your life. Say, God, I'm your child. I just want to live to the best of my ability for you. And uh, we're just, that's really all we're trying to do. God, whatever it is that you want my life to be, that's what I want you to help me be. God, whatever you want me to do, that's what I want you to help me accomplish. This focus is based upon the Word of God. Not upon our knowledge, not upon our intelligence, not upon our talents. But it's based upon the Word of God and, and having uh, our lives to the, living to the best of our ability for God. That's all we're trying to do. And so the psalmist is he's doing this section, and it represents the breathings in Greek. It's, it's like the breath of the psalmist is coming across. God, here I am. I'm just, I'm just offering myself to you. I'm just putting myself into your hands. I'm just making myself submitted and surrendered to you, God. And here I am. That's a total yielding to the Almighty. He says, be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Uh, give, he's giving a pledge or a token that, that he will be helped in times of necessity. Um, it's, the, the phrase is like uh, bail for the servant. Bail for a person who's in need. The, the word is, I pledge uh, I, I'm pledging myself to you, God. And because of that, you're producing a safety for me on my daily life. Uh, let's not forget that God doesn't take days off of looking after you and I. He doesn't. He, he's not too busy today to care about you. He, he's, he's got you. He knows exactly what's happening in your life. And you can... You can have a surety that because you're God's child, he's not letting you play in the street and be a danger. No, no, he's got his hand upon your life today. The enemy's not allowed to, to, to try to destroy you in a way without God knowing. There's no surprises to God. He, he, he's got you. He's, he's, he's making sure that that you're being looked after, the sustenance, the, the, the looking after you on a, on a regular basis. Now, I want you to notice uh, we're on Psalm 119, verse 122. And this is the first two verses, 121 and 122, that do not contain one of the ten words that every other verse contains. And so 121 and 122 are the two verses of this chapter you'll notice that don't say testimonies or law or precepts or word. He's putting out a breath that, okay, God, I'm trying to live for you. I've got my focus on what's right here. And I am putting my hope and my trust in you alone. There's a surety for thy servant for good. The meaning of that surety, you find it in Job 17, Isaiah 38. It's, it's rendered in Isaiah as an undertake for me. It's to uh, properly means to mix, to mingle, to hence, to braid, to interweave, to interchange. He's, he's, um, it's, it's like he's got us on, on a, not, not a leash, <laughs> but you know how parents have those little things that, their little two-year-olds and three-year-olds can't get too far. 
It's almost like a leash. Daycare have where the, the children hold on to the rope. They got their own little section to hold on to. They've got, they've got this assurance. Well, you know what? God's, God's kind of got it like that with us. No matter how old it is that we are, no matter how long we've been serving God, there is a safety of being close to Him and an assurance, a surety, the psalmist says, that you got your faith and hope and trust in God because you're His child and He's not going to let anything happen to you that He doesn't know. That's a quite assurance. He's got a protection about you. He's got his interest on you. His, his assurance is there. A security. The psalmist is putting this out there. He's trying to explain the pledge that God has. That we read verses like this. That he will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Not one hair of your head falls to the ground without him knowing. There's an assurance and a pledge that he's got his hand upon your life. <laughs> I, I have a, a great wife who was an incredible mother. Still is. Great grand, is a, not a great grandmother. <laughs> Always put those words in the wrong places. She's a wonderful grandmother. Let's use that word instead. But I, it was so comical growing up because our kids, you know, they, they got to an age where they thought they could do things on their own. And, but mom was always still careful. We lived in Mamrishi. Right across the street was a little store. The kids always liked going over there. But mom always stood at the kitchen window and watched. Even as they got older and were old enough to cross the street on their own, they never were outside of the sight. <laughs> the Bible talks about he's always got his eye on you. It's not out of some, you know, a mischievous way or some, well, I'm just going to see what they're doing. No, no, he's got his eye on you because he's got a pledge about you. There's an assurance about you that you're his child and you're not going to be out of his sight. I'll tell you what, that's a wonderful thing to know. That it doesn't matter what's around the corner. God's already watching. He's already well aware what may be coming your way, there's an assurance. And I wish we really, really knew what that pledge was. I wish I could grasp how he's got his eye fixed on me all the time. And he knows exactly what's happening in my life on a continual basis. Not to try to make me look bad. No, rather... That there's an assurance about my life that it's going to be okay. Yeah. He said, let not the proud oppress me. Let them not triumph over me or crush me. Let them not bring a harm to me, God, that you're unaware of. If something's happening in your life or something's happening in mine, God knows exactly what that is. It's kind of like that. With your children. There's a, a mama bear mentality that comes out. I just read a terrible story last week about a mother and her seven month old baby that were killed in Alaska, I believe it was, or Yukon, by a grizzly. There's a there's an incredible safety net that's built in. In the natural, with creation. Well, there's a safety net built in with moms and dads here, too. 
You can say things about your kids, but no one else better. Well, there's, there's a safety net also that God has upon you. That he takes note of what's said about his children. He's got it all recorded. <laughs> he isn't pleased at times of how his children may be oppressed in some way. And the psalmist says, let them not triumph over me. Let them not oppress me. Let them not crush me. Let me tell you this. God just allows it to go so far. And then it's over. That's my child. You can give a little bit of direction. You can give a little bit of criticism. You can give a little. But it goes to a point where he said, that's enough. Aren't you glad that God knows exactly when to say that's enough? <laughs> the enemy, he, he has no say when God says that's enough. There's no argument with God. He steps in and he covers you with his feathers. And under his wings you can trust. And he'll take you and hide you in the cleft of the rock. Yeah, when he when he comes to the when he comes to the forefront, that those breathings of the psalmist in this section, he just lets there be an assurance. Man, I wish I could tell it to you better. An assurance that God has got you, and you're going to be okay. He says, "Mine eyes fail for thy salvation." And for the word of thy righteousness, the, the righteousness word, that it may be known to me that I may see the beauty of what God's doing and enjoy it. It's nice to be able to sit back and see how God is guiding, directing, protecting, covering, taking care of your life. Sometimes when we're in the moment, it's difficult. But we can look back and see how God has had his hand in our life throughout the years. Some of us would have never imagined that we'd be where we are in God today. You could have never, you could have never put it together when you started serving God. You could have never come up with this plan. But you can look back and watch how God's hand was involved in situations and circumstances and decisions and moments and, and memorial times in your life and, and parts where God's, you know without a doubt, he was involved. And it becomes a beauty. That's what the psalmist is saying. He said, mine eyes fail for thy salvation in the word of thy righteousness. I just sometimes am overwhelmed at how awesome you've been, God. And allowing your hand to be upon my life. I look at where God has brought me and I could have never imagined it. Could have never dreamt it. I mean, you have to know where I came from. <laughs> I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. On your way to somewhere. Not a stoplight. No gas station. Only a couple stop signs that we know of. Seriously, you look back and you say, God, you've orchestrated. Orchestrated. It's beautiful. He says, deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy and teach me thy statutes. Not according to justice as sinners, that's not, God, deal with me, deal with me, thy servant, according unto thy mercy. No man who knows himself could ask of God to deal with him according to the strict principles of justice. But because he has displayed his mercy into your life and you're his child. Listen, that's, 
That's no different in the natural. Someone, someone's needing mercy. They're going to run to mom and dad. Not to the person who pulled them by the ear, put them in their spot. They're going to run to mom and dad. It's kind of like that. The enemy trips you up and he puts stumbling blocks in your way and you're calling out to your heavenly father. God, I'm your servant here. I'm your child. And I've had this happen in my life and I kind of need your help right now. And oh, what a pride there is when, when children call out to mom and dad and mom and dad come to the rescue. You never felt proud that your children needed you in some instance? <laughs> they called out when their car wouldn't start <laughs> and they called you. Maybe been in the middle of the night and you may not have been too anxious to get up out of bed to do it, but it's your, your child. It's your child. And they had enough confidence to call me. <laughs> you never ever say call someone else. No. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the last thing you would per portray. You don't have to worry about God saying, well, you know what? I've got too much on the plate today. Pray tomorrow. No, no, no. You never have to worry about that with God. You're his child. <laughs> he's got a pledge about you. He's got, he's got an interest in you. Yeah. No, no. He says, the psalmist is saying, deal with thy servant according to thy mercy. I'm asking you, God. I'm putting it out to you. I have, I have no other, no one else to put my faith and trust in. You are my heavenly father. And I'm leaning upon you. There is no other person that I'm going to call in this time of need. And he says, teach me thy statutes. Show me thy mercy and allow me to experience thy law again. God, I've just got my faith and trust in you because you've done it for me before. I called on you before. You never, ever gave me a disappointing answer. Oh, it may not have always been yes, or it may not have always been on the timeline you wanted, but you called out to your heavenly Father, and he came to the rescue. And he's, the psalmist is saying, listen, I, I, I've just got myself that if you would do that for your child in the natural, how much more does your heavenly Father just wait? for you to call upon him in any type of need, for you to put your faith and trust in him and say, God, just let your mercy be shown in my life again. Yeah. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. You notice the theme here? Over and over he's repeating that. I'm, I'm your child I'm your servant. I've got, you've got an interest in me. I've got an assurance with you, God. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimony. Since I am your servant, instruct me according to your will. As I desire thee, and I become acceptable through obedience to you, God, would you just allow your will to be displayed in my life. See, this is the prayer of a piety. A man who sincerely desires to obey God and to ascertain what is the will of God through obedience to the word of God. I had an instance happen. Miranda was in university. Miranda's pretty independent, if you haven't already noticed. And uh, she had her little car, and she was independent. She was trying to run her own finance, and she's trying to go to university. Not a lot of money when you go to university, and she's going to church in Amherst. And it's about 12 kilometers. And on this certain Sunday, I was sitting in the family room, and I had this urge to call her. 
I called her. I could hear traffic. Where are you, Miranda? Oh, I'm walking the four lane across the marsh to church. I'm like, what are you doing? Well, I didn't have gas, so I decided to walk the 12 kilometers to church. Well, how are you going to get home? Well, I brought my flats. <laughs> She was halfway to church. I'm like, my Lord, <laughs> go back. We'll put some money in your account. <laughs> you can get some gas. I, my wife is sitting in the room wondering what's going on. I'm trying to be discreet and not tell her that I can hear traffic on the four lane as Miranda's walking on her way to church, has a flashlight so that she can use it on the way home. Like, what? Who, who taught her these things? <laughs> I'm your servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. Just as I was thinking that as a, in the natural as a dad. Miranda, you cannot do that. <laughs> Go home. Go back. Get your car. Get some gas. We're glad you're going to church, but we'd like you to make it home safely. Can you imagine how our Heavenly Father is? <laughs> We're going about our daily activities, and He's just urging something, trying to trigger something in us for us to reach out to Him so He can be the supply of our need. <laughs> he says, give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. The psalmist is putting it out there. I, I want to have this relationship with you, God, because I am your child. Just as we would be with our natural children. That's how our Heavenly Father wants to be with us. I'll take care of it if you just ask I've got your back if you just put your trust in me I got Miranda to promise never to do that again just ask and we'll take care of it how many times is the Lord just wanting us to ask him so there can be a testimony that you are his child and he wants to take care of you. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. For they have made void thy law. It's time for thee, Lord, to work. The time is fulfilled in which thou hast promised deliverance to the people. He's speaking about the Babylonians literally. Time to do for Yahweh. The construction might either be that it's time to do something for Yahweh or it's time for Yahweh himself to do something. When you see in this verse capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, he's speaking about Yahweh. And he's coming across in two different possibilities of ways. It's time to do something for Yahweh, or it's time for Yahweh to do something. When you have this relationship with God, it's going to be one of those two ways. It's either time for you to reach out and ask God to be your assistance, or it's time for you to do something for God. Either way, God is ready. He's ready for me to reach out and praise him, worship him, or he's ready to do something for me. That's what the psalmist is saying. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. It's time for thee to work. They have made void thy law. They have filled it up with a measure of their iniquities. They have broken it. They have set it at a defiance. They regard it as, as something that is for naught. But 
because of your relationship with God. This is something you don't have to worry about. You don't have to worry about out asking him to help you. Well, you know what? I've already talked to the Lord this week five times about things that I needed help with. Don't want to bother him. It's not how we would think about that to our children. And I, I'm more concerned when my kids don't call me. Why aren't they calling me? Why don't they need my help? God knows exactly everything that's happened. With You don't have to worry about being a bother to him. You don't have to worry about asking him for stuff. You don't have to worry about, well, you know what? He's just done too many things. I'm just going to leave this one. No, no, no. It's time for Yahweh to work. He wants to display that you're his. He brings you right to the forefront. This is my child. This is my son. This is my daughter. This is the one that I purchased. This is one I call my own. This is who I adopted. He's proud. He's proud of you being his child. You don't have to worry about your bothering him. It's too small. He's got bigger things to do. No, 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 no. Never, ever worry about that. It's time for Yahweh to work. Not, well, I'm, I think I've taken advantage of him. No, he's your heavenly father. You know, we, we get all these thoughts in our mind that I, I'm not sure God would be concerned about that. He's concerned about everything you're concerned about and much more. Nothing's too big. Nothing's too small. He's just wanting us. He's just wanting us to take the time to ask him for his assistance. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, above, yea, above fine gold. He says, therefore, I love thy commandments. He's, I see all the things that you're doing, God, and I trust you. The more people break the commandments of the Lord, the more we realize that our trust is in God and how important it is. Really, that has a strong truth. No matter how terrible the world gets, all it does is let you know how great your relationship with God is and how important it is to preserve that relationship. Don't let, don't let what's happening around you bother you. Don't let what's happening around you make you afraid. Let it actually secure the surety of your walk with God and say, you know what? I'm so glad I know who my father is. I am so glad I have a relationship with the Lord. I am so glad that I know who I can call in time of need. There's an assurance with that. He says, uh, and he uses this phrase, above gold. Mitzvah, more than resplendent gold. Gold without stain or rust. Then he says, yea, above fine gold. Umpapaz or umpapaz. Above solid gold. Gold separated from the dross. Perfectly refined. He, he's coming out and he's saying, listen, I've got a relationship with God. That is greater than the value of perfect gold. Perfect gold is actually clear. Totally refined. You know, when you're walking on streets of gold, it won't be the gold that we see. It'll be perfect gold. Clear. And he says, listen, our relationship that we have, and he uses this, I love that commandments above gold. I have this walk with you, God, that is greater 
than the most perfect refined gold. Man, I wish I could actually understand the assurance of this relationship that he's talking about. I've served God all my life, and I'm trying to grasp how powerful it is of my walk with God. And no matter what's happening, it's more valuable than anything that could even be refined perfectly. I'm a long ways from perfect, but my relationship with him is built on an absolute perfect, perfect God. Mm. Oh, he's so in love with you. He's so desiring of you. He thinks so much about you. Therefore, he said, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. There are too many supplied words here to actually explain the text. All the ancient versions seem to admit the second call or the all and read the text. Therefore, I have walked straight in all thy precepts. I go straight on in all thy precepts, hating every false way. The idea seems to be that regarded as right, the commandments pertaining to everything and every person is considered in every way, and God, there's nothing that he has forgotten about that you could get into that he hasn't covered you. There's nothing that's going to happen in your life that's going to surprise him in any way that he hasn't already planned for to take care of you. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. The effect has been laid to reflect the worth of your relationship with God, how God has approved that, and he loves it, and he sees it as greater than the most refined gold. And the psalmist is putting it out there. He's trying to explain it to us, how powerful your relationship with God can be. He says, he ends it with saying, and I hate every false way, every course of life that's not based upon the truth of that relationship. I don't want anything to do with it. Everything that even puts out a perception that would be something questionable about that relationship. I just want to put that. I want to get rid of that. I don't want that to be part of this discussion. I want everything to be that my total trust and hope is in the Lord. He's got my best interest at heart. As we grow in God and as we get closer to him, we understand more and more how important and how valuable your relationship with God really is. We'll only truly, fully grasp how awesome it has been when you stand before the throne and you get to see how he has had his hand upon your life in everything you've done. And when it was out of his will and contrary to his word, how he's been continually trying to get you back into that closeness of relationship with him, how he continually is beckoning you and bringing you closer and never trying to push you away. The analysis of this section, first of all, he makes a profession of the integrity of his walk with God, prays for protection against the enemy, and then he resolves to understand that his walk is right before God. That profession of integrity. He says, I've, I have done judgment and justice. I, I've got everything put upon this, that I have a, an assurity. There's a surety and assurance that he is going to stand with me no matter what tries to oppress me. I cannot fall out of his hand. 
He's got me. He's going to take care of me. And I wish I fully grasped that. That's why the word says that nothing can pluck you out of his hand. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He shows us that what the enemy is trying to do, it really, it really isn't going to work if you've got your faith and trust in God. He says, my eyes fail. My faith is almost gone. My, my eye of my mind becomes dim. But I've got, my, I've got my faith in God. He says, deal with thy servant. Teach me thy statutes. I want to learn, God, that you are the most awesome thing that I could ever, ever have. He urges that request. I am thy servant. He's not a, you're not a stranger to God. His, his, he's at work. No matter how strong the enemy thinks he is, he is nothing compared to God and how powerful his walk with you and your walk with him is. I don't know. Someone needed to hear it tonight. That it doesn't, it really doesn't matter what the world throws your way. You can make it with your relationship with God because he's got his eye upon you and you're going to be okay. Don't allow the enemy to lie to you and say you've almost, you're almost done, you're almost gone, you're almost over. No, no, that's, that's hogwash. That's a lie. You got to walk with God. You've given your heart to the Lord. Let me tell you, there's nothing that's happening in your life right now that surprises God. He's got his hand upon your life. Even people who walk away from God, he never takes his hand off of their life. Oh, never. The zeal of the psalmist in closing. He's got an increased love that this is going to be a relationship that lasts. Therefore, he says, be, he's, he's, he's looking at the situations. That's a surety. Uh, there's, therefore, he uses the phrase, I love thy commandments. He, he's using this, I've made up my mind, God, that there's nothing else that compares to my relationship with you. If you bring that into every decision you're making, you'll have no problem making the decision. Because if that interferes, no matter what it is, interferes with that relationship, it will be not important enough. No matter where you live, no matter what you do, no matter what you buy, no matter relationships, doesn't, doesn't matter what, what you bring into the situation. If it tries to interfere with your relationship with God, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Because your assurance, your surety, is in his hand being upon your life. The most powerful thing. Stand. Many throughout the Bible walked in such a, a powerful way with God. You see, we read about it. It's, it's great. And those are, we consider them heroes. But sitting in this congregation tonight, now standing, lots of heroes as well. You decided however long ago, I'm going to walk with God to the best of my ability. And you made a decision. A lot of things have come your way. A lot of decisions had to be made. A lot of choices had to be made. But you said above all else, I must be saved. Above all else, got to have my relationship with God. You say, well, you know, I went through a rough spell. I went through a dry spell. I went through a challenging time. But you made up your mind. 
I've got to walk with God. And that's what's the most sure. So I'm just going to keep my walk with God as the forefront of my life. And because you have done that, here you stand tonight, still walking with God, still got your hand in his hand, and everything's going to be okay because you still got your hand in his hand. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. I thank you, Lord, for your power and your spirit tonight. I thank you for the assurance of my walk with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you've been challenged tonight with some family situations where even family has questioned your walk with God. But you made up your mind you're going to walk with God anyway. And above all that pressure and criticism, you made up your mind you're going to walk with Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you've been through some financial struggles, but you put your faith and trust in God. Maybe you've been through some health issues, but you got your faith and trust in God. Hallelujah. Your walk with God is above everything else. Hallelujah. You maybe even had times of questioning God because of family situations or job situations or all kinds of things. But above everything, you still held on to. My relationship with God is what's got me this far. And my relationship with God is what's going to get me the rest of the way. Maybe somebody's even disappointed you. (laughs) It happens even in the church. Maybe someone's disappointed you. But your walk with God was more valuable. And whether someone disappointed you or not. You got your faith in your walk with God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, why don't you raise your hands and just worship the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Thank Him for your walk with Him. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord, for my walk with you. I thank you, Lord, for the people tonight, God, that's got their walk with you. Oh, God, they're just going one day at a time. Hallelujah. Walking with you every step of the way. Lord, they've got the assurance of your word. The assurance, God, of their their depth in you. Hallelujah, Lord, their consistency with you. I thank you, Lord, for the power of your spirit, the power of your word, the authority of your name, your precious blood. Thank you, Jesus, for our relationship with you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'll end it with this tonight. You say, well, I've I've disappointed God. What would happen? Listen, there's things that happen in the natural. You may not always agree with everything that happens with your kids. But in a sincere moment of them calling out to mom or dad, In a second, you would be there to help them. In a second. Let me tell someone here tonight, you may feel like you've disappointed God. You call out to him in a split second. Your heavenly father will be right there. Because there's nothing more valuable to him than your walk with him. Nothing. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost tonight. God, I pray, Lord, for every person in this room right now. God, you know how each person came into the house of the Lord tonight. And God, Lord, over the last five or ten minutes, I felt in the spirit. God, someone, Lord, in this building. God, that's reaching out to you. And they've got, Lord, they've got an assurance uh, reminded in their minds tonight, God, of their walk with you being more valuable than anything else in the world. And God, let them leave this place, God, I pray, with a renewed assurance and a surety. God, that you've got them right in your hand and nothing else, God, matters. Hallelujah. Above everything else in this world, their relationship with you is the most important. I pray, God, in a second. Lord, just the mention of your name, that's as close as you are. Hallelujah. Thank you for it. Let everyone be assured of that tonight, I pray. And we ask it in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you tonight, amen.